Hi guys, this is Alex and we're back to discuss another week of investing. As you know, the, the world climate is still pretty volatile. The uh, war in the Ukraine is still going on. They have been trying to get to uh, the table to talk peace, but so far that has been unsuccessful. The fallout of that is of course, A, the uh, massive human suffering. Um, there's nothing like losing your home, losing your country, and losing your heat at the same time, because from what I hear, people don't have heat right now. It's, it's still winter in Europe. So let's, um, let's wish well and, and have prayerful thoughts for um, our fellow humans in the Ukraine, because I've been through war, I've lived through war, and it is not something that you would want on anybody, on anybody. So let's keep, keep in mind um, our fellow humans over in the Ukraine and Russia too, because the Russians, the Russian people are suffering, even though their leadership um, is not, probably. With regards to investing, um, there's a lot of volatility in the market still. And um, believe it or not, volatility is actually what gives people the opportunity to um, make some money in the market. And, you know, I want to preface by saying that we want, we don't want to make money off of the suffering of others. Not at all. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that whenever there's volatility, there's an opportunity for us to buy things that are on sale and volatility can be caused by many, many things. It can be caused by war. Certainly it can be caused by pandemic. It can be caused by, um, natural events, earthquakes, natural disasters, but many, many things. And in a stock market, in the investing world, investors like stability because they want to be able to predict earnings and then have companies execute on their business plan and then get the earnings that they were predicting on, okay? The problem with that is that when things are predictable, then the returns are predictable, right? The most predictable thing, for example, is to put your money into a bank account with a given interest rate. And in, in the time period that you agreed upon, you get your interest rate. And that's why when you put your money in the, in the bank, the interest rate now anyways is very low. It's under 1% return because it's predictable, right? When we have unpredictability, we need to take risks. And when we take risks, we want to be rewarded for our risks. And that's why there's the stock market, there is the crypto market, there's the real estate market, there's the collectible arts market. There are many, many different markets and each, each market, each stock, each investment brings with it a certain amount of risk. And the higher the risk, of course, the more return you want to take that risk. It just makes sense, it's very logical, okay? So I just wanted to, to remind everybody of that especially now in this volatile market, because right now the mindset is that we're, we're fearful because of the volatility. We're fearful that we'll lose everything. And we're fearful that these conditions will stay the way they are forever. It's really weird the, the, the way the mind works is that when things are great, you think it'll be great forever. When things are bad, you'll think it'll be bad forever. It's just the way we work as humans. But in reality, life isn't that way. Investing isn't that way. When things are good, it'll be good for a while, but then things will change, then it'll be bad, and it'll be bad for a while, and then things will change, and it'll be good again. It's a sine wave. It's like, it's like the seasons. It's like the rain. The rain doesn't come forever. The sunshine doesn't come forever either. Things will change. So let's keep it in mind. Right now, um, the market's worldwide are down. Um, the U.S. has been down. Asia follows the U.S., so it's down. Um, and yesterday when I checked the, uh, the stock index in the Philippines, almost all the stocks were down, almost all of them without exception. So the question becomes, okay, if we see this as an opportunity to invest and to buy um, on sale, what do we invest in? Well, here's the problem, isn't it? Because there is, there's always more opportunity than there's revenue, than there's investable money. So we just gotta pick what we feel comfortable with, what we believe in, okay? Based on fundamentals, of course, but we still need to give some personality to our, to our investment. 
um, every week, I try to talk about the stocks that look good for this week. But honestly, right now, almost all the stocks look good. Okay, um, we have a um, we have a Google Sheets, and I'll share that in um, in another link that lists all of the stocks that we've been talking about for the past couple of months. And um, nice thing about that is that it shows where we thought we should go in, where we think we should go out and, and take our profits. Um, and if you're interested in that, just make sure you subscribe and let us know and we'll be happy to send that to you so you can keep track as well. It's not perfect, but it's a good place to, to organize, okay? Um, in there, you'll see many, many companies that we talked about, you know, good solid companies with good solid businesses, good solid prospects and good solid execution on their business strategies. Um, they include Ayala Corporations, SM Corporation, Electric Corporations, Mining Corporations, Travel Corporations, Food Operations, and so on and so forth. Because in the end, no matter what happens anywhere, we still have to live somewhere. We still need to eat. We still need to consume fuel for our cars, for our transportation, for air conditioning for heat, to cook, we consume fuel to cook, right? To make things. So just keep that in mind too, everything goes on. We still need to consume. Um, one thing that we should be aware of now because of the um, pandemic the past two and a half years is that the supply chains have been disrupted. And when supply chains have been disrupted, shipping and whatever gets more expensive. Um, the cost of materials gets more expensive. So. When the expense of a corporation goes up, then their earnings, their net earnings, their profitability goes down. And when the profitability goes down, it drags out the stock market, uh, the, the stock price. So what we need to account for there is that how will they make up for that? Will they raise prices? Will they try to sell more? Or will they absorb it and take lesser profit? Okay, Th these are the choices that the business managers have to make. And we need to be mindful of those decisions because their decisions affects their ultimate profitability and the profitability affects the stock price. And that's what we're looking for, okay? Um, so with that, let's take a look at the stocks for this week. Um, the first one is DMC Holdings. Now we had the stock in our portfolio a while back. We bought it at a good price. It hit our, our target profit price. We sold it, took the profit. And now it's probably a good time to go back in, okay? Um, as you know, energy costs across the world have gone up. Um, coal prices remains elevated and they'll still be high for a while for the foreseeable future. Um, so this company's income met expectations. They were able to execute on their plan and got the profit levels that they expected, which is good for a stock. You want that, okay? Um, consumer usage of Energy that's derived from coal will be even higher because there's more mobility now. Businesses will operate more, they'll need more power, okay? So if you're interested, look to enter or start your position at about 8.5 pesos or so. That's good, you know, somewhere around there. And then the priced in level in the short term, meaning within this year, is probably gonna be around 10 for DMC Holdings. You guys have any questions about that one before we go to the second one? All good. All good? All right. The second is um, Bloomberry. I've looked at Bloomberry for a while now because with the lockdown and with no foreigners, um, their earnings were hit bad, okay? They, they didn't get the income from the Chinese because the Chinese come in and gamble a lot, just to be quite honest. They didn't get income from the Koreans because the South Koreans like to travel and gamble as well. They play golf and they spend money at the casinos and at the resorts, okay? So they didn't have that. And then even the local gamblers and resort cores, they didn't have because of the level three, you couldn't go anywhere. But that's changed, as you know. Um, most of the Philippines now, about 70% has been vaccinated. And in the metro area, the alert levels down to one so people can go and do things. I've heard people go to swimming pools and have no masks and 
get really close to each other and that kind of thing. So, so people are moving about. And what that means for um, as a resort operator like Blueberry is that they'll get more people into their resorts, spend money into resorts and raise earnings. Um, but more importantly, they're getting more foreigners back into the country. And as you know, uh, foreigners spend a lot of money because they're on vacation. They're in vacation mode. They're going to spend a lot of money. Okay. So that will translate to higher earnings from Bloomberry. And we see that already. They announced their earnings. You can look it up. Um, and the net loss has been declining. Okay. So we see that trend. And I believe that trend will continue because um, I don't see any talk about the alert levels being raised higher. I don't see any talk about shutting off um, the borders to foreigners again. I think the, the Philippines will keep it open for a while. And that's what I see anyways. Besides, we're all vaccinated and, you know, this this, this uh, COVID virus will be around. We just have to, to manage it. Okay. Um, for, for the Bloomberry, I recommend if you want to get into this company at about eight pesos, and then um, it's probably going to tap out in terms of the potential earnings at about 20% up. So that's 10 pesos. Okay. So that's Bloomberry for you. It's not for everybody because not all of us believe in gambling. I mean, I know they have the resort component too. Not all of us believe in gambling. And like I said, when you own stock, you actually become an owner of a company and you want to be an owner of a company that represents your values. You know, I'm not saying that's good either. Okay. Because really there is no good and bad in the scheme of things. Um, it's just what you believe in. So, so if it's something that you believe in, if, if coal is something you believe in, then yeah, DMC, if it's something that you're totally like, doesn't represent you, then don't, there are other choices. But I just wanted to present the different options out there. Okay. That makes sense, right? Yes, it is. Okay. So remember, you're going to be owners here. Um, the third is Metro Pacific Investments. Um, Metro Pacific, they, their board announced that they're going to buy back their stock. And this is worth a little bit of discussion because when a company decides to buy back its stock, what it's doing is this, it's taking its profits, all of the profits are called retained earnings. It's taking some of the retained earnings and it's gonna go out there to the stock market like you, like you and I, okay? And buy shares. And when they buy a share, a couple of things happen. Number one is there's less shares floating around and with supply and demand, when there's less shares, the prices tend to go up because there's less to go around, okay? But the second thing is that they're taking their retained earnings, which normally they use to reinvest in the business to buy stocks, okay? And when you're a business manager, when you're an executive, when you're a leader for any corporation, small or big, your number one priority, number one priority is not the customers, it's not the product, believe it or not, okay? It's this, your number one priority is what to do with your capital. How do you allot your capital so that it has the best return on investment? That's it, okay? That's the, the, that's the reality of business. And it makes sense, right? If you focus on just a better product and that's your number one priority, then you can create a better product. Yeah, but you blew out, you, you blew out your 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 income or you blow out your income and then there's no customers, you know? So that's not the issue. If you focus just on customers, well, you could and you should have a prior in customers, but customers, you know, they come and go, you'll have your, your set, whatever, but it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you, you would focus and lose all your earnings on customers to have one happy customer or 10 happy. No, no, it's a balance, right? What you want to do, because in life, everything is limited, is to figure out where to allocate your resources so that you have the best return. Okay, where do you put, where do you, you put the money so that you can get the best return on the money? Because that's called efficiency, right? 
because when you get the best return on your money, you have more money to develop better product, more money to do customer service, more money to pay your employees, that kind of thing. So that's number one, number one thing for a company. And normally when they have retained earnings, they, they spend it more on R&D, they, they grow their plant for more capacity. You know, they do more, they, they do all of that. Now, when a company says, you know what, we're going to take a portion and invest it in ourselves, they see that buyback as a really judicious use of capital. And they see it as having a higher return than, for example, investing in a new plant. That says a lot. It says that, you know what, I believe that this stock is undervalued and I believe that we should buy it because we'll get a higher return than if we were to invest in a plant with that same amount of money. Does that make sense? Yes. It's an important concept. And um, we need to, to think about that, not only for um, when we run a company, but for our personal finances too. You know, Like for example, should I buy these pair of shoes or should I, <laughs> should I you know, um, buy makeup? Or should I buy food? You know, which one has the highest return investment for me right now, given my limited refund, my limited resources? Okay. Um, so Metro Pacific Invest will buy back their stock. That's usually a good sign that they believe that this is the best they can do with their money right now. Um, in terms of the fundamentals, their, their 12 month PE price to earning ratios is um, significantly lower than their peers. They're at eight, about eight, and their peers are about 14. So they believe that there's a gap there, okay? They believe that it should be higher than eight, it should be 10, it should be 12, it should be 14, right? So there's a gap there. Um, and perhaps they're right. I, I believe them because when you run your company, you know the data a lot better than an external um, operation because external operation can only see outside. You know? So I would look at this company given all of that and... If you want to start a position about 3.8 pesos is good. And then take your profit somewhere north of that, about 20%, 4.5. Um, we're probably going to start a position that really soon here. There's a lot of choices, like I said earlier. Um, but this is one of the choices that we're going to look at seriously. So that's it, guys. Do you have any questions for this week? I just remember, I want to ask you about Siri. Uh, it, it, uh, it is a real, real estate, um, investment and it's new mm -hmm. and, um, people are talking about it and, uh, on its IPO, like, um, months ago, a lot of people, um, uh, bought it and I think it, it is overbought, but, uh, now oh. it, um, uh, there are a lot of people saying that uh, investing on real estate is good because of dividends, because of um, um, it's it's real estate. Um, it's it's not the uh, it's always appreciate <laughs> it it appreciates right the price is uh, going up for real estate. So I am not sure about it. I haven't bought any stock uh, this year. <laughs> Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, you know, real estate uh, is one investment class, and there are several. We talked about this in the past. Um, mm -hmm. Stocks, another investment class. Bonds, another investment class. Um, crypto, becoming an investment class. Mm -hmm. um, so, notes, notes, um, investment class. So it's important to understand what your total portfolio mix is. Um, and I think in upcoming discussions, we'll actually go to portfolio theory so that we know how to structure a portfolio. Um, when you have, we talk about real estate, there's actually real estate, like, like you know, owning a house, owning land, owning a apartment building that you rent out to other people. And there are REITs, which is real estate investment trust. Okay. Um, I think what you're talking about is a REIT, right? Real estate investment trust. Yeah. Okay. So, so I would look at it, at it 
when you don't have much money in your big portfolio as to, okay, do I have real estate as a percentage of my portfolio now or not? And if I don't, maybe I'll look at a REIT because it'll give me some exposure to that asset class. And like I said, we should only have X percentage per asset class, okay? But I think in your case, I, I, I know you have a house, right? So yeah. So, <laughs> so that house is already part of your portfolio mix, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so if you buy more REITs, that means you're more heavily weighted in real estate than something else, which may may, may not be good. It just depends on your goals, you know? Mm-hmm. But if your goal is to have good diversity, then maybe it's something that you shouldn't look at now, given your situation. But someone who doesn't have any exposure to real estate might want to take a look at it. Does that make sense? Yes, it is. Yeah, sure. It's all about diversification because, um, you know, the worst thing we can all do is to buy one thing, whatever it is, one BD baby. One, one NFT, one stock, and say, you know what? Boom, this is it. Um, because that's not diversification, that's gambling. Um, we can control, we think we can control many variables, but, we, but we, we don't, we can't control. The only thing we can control is our asset allocation. Okay, Everything else is actually beyond our control. Um, right. So we want our asset allocation to be mixed so that if one goes down, another goes up, another stays neutral, we're okay in the long term. I understand. Alex. It was like diversifying your portfolio? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Noted that. <laughs> Thank you. I remember um, two years ago when Dito was so hot, everybody was talking about it. And then some people went all in. They put, you know, one million shares of Dito kind of thing. And they thought they're going to be billionaires. Um, but it doesn't really work that way. And most people who lost their shirt, you know, um, people who were at 10%, for example, may have lost, but the other 90% kind of made up for it. You know, the Ayala, the banks, you know, may now they're in suicide mode, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> and then now it's, it's a good time to buy again, but they don't have any more money to buy, you know, or to get a bad taste. But now it really is a good time to buy again. We talked about them in the previous week. I didn't talk about crypto at all because there's not much change in crypto this week, but um, always keep an eye on two, Bitcoin and Ethereum. The rest of them are are actually uh, not that good unless you have a very specific use case for your crypto. But those two are a lot more, accepted as payments if you need to use them as payments than any other crypto all right mm-hmm. that's it for now if you, you enjoyed this make sure that you like share subscribe and when you do subscribe let us know and we'll send you access to the tracking spreadsheet and it's, it's a great tool guys i mean we talk about stocks three stocks a week for for months now and uh, you'll keep growing but it it's a good place to keep track of you know, what we should look at, when we should sell, when we should buy, that kind of thing. I know you can do it yourself as well, but um, this is all in one place and I think they'll help you with your investing effort.